A new wave of indie creators is upending mainstream comics. This article comes from Bleeding Cool. It's a good premise. Um, it needs a lot of help. I'm going to help it. I'm going to show you um, what they meant to say and cover what they did cover. Some of what they covered was actually good. And we'll go over it in detail. Before we get into this article, if you want to support my work, collegeofthedead.com, where college costs you an arm and a leg. Check out my zombie apocalypse series and sign up at epicmermaids.com for the Mermaids comic book. Back to the article. In the comics industry, a creator's success is often measured by how much work they get at Marvel and DC. You know what? That's true. Uh, people would say, like, well, are you working for the big two, those two big companies? The goal of many creators, especially writers, seems to be create enough of their own personal stories in order to get considered to write for established characters owned by a corporation. Um, a lot of writers do have um, the objective to go ahead and want to work for the big companies and write for the major characters. And part of that is also building their reputation uh, so they can go on and, and get a bigger audience if you're... Um, well, if you're anybody, if you're um, Tom McFarlane and you're drawing Spawn, uh, drawing Spider-Man, then you're going to have a big audience when you launch Spawn. If you're Robert Kirkman and you're writing Marvel Zombies, you're going to have a bigger audience when you launch uh, The Walking Dead, projects that you own and control. It is important to build an audience. It makes sense, of course, because surviving off indie comics can be a difficult task. It has been for many years. And the big two can pay page rates that indie companies could never hope to scratch. Well, that's not true. There are very successful independent companies that will pay a lot of money, especially for name creative talent. However, the mainstream comics industry is not the end all and be all of success in this field. In fact, some of the biggest success stories in comics go unnoticed by creative communities because they're not happening where everyone's looking. A wave of crowdfunding comics has been building from a quiet rumble into a roar in recent years to the point where strength of this indie movement has been impossible to ignore. A lot of major creators, um, particularly, are very angry with the Comicsgate guys uh, because the Comicsgate guys seem to be doing incredibly well and their campaigns and their businesses and their success is building and also they're having a lot of fun doing it with, with mostly uh, a lot of promotion on YouTube. With creators using platforms like Kickstarter, and they forget a big one called Indiegogo. Uh, and Indiegogo is where uh, multiple millions uh, is done with uh, Comicsgate projects. And I'll go over a list of them. I have a nice link to that. So with creators using platforms like Kickstarter and especially Indiegogo to build their businesses and create their art and stories, what can mainstream publishers offer them that they haven't already done themselves? Let's take a look at four such creators and what we can learn from their success stories. And there is something to learn from everyone who's been uh, successful. Uh, mainstream publishers can offer a lot. One thing is, if you get to write Spider-Man, that's terrific for your career if you're a writer. If you get the opportunity to write, uh, well, Batman, you know, major titles, um, you can get um, royalties and future participation if you create characters, but really you can build an audience of people that you can then take to crowdfunding. Actually, uh, Comics Matter with your boy Zach, a great YouTube channel, uh, just did a video earlier today talking about how if you um, build a nice audience, a good sized audience working for mainstream companies, that's very useful uh, when you want to go eventually and crowdfund your own projects. Uh, absolutely accurate, absolutely true. The first one they have is a title called Girl Genius. But what they leave out are all these comics geek titles. Um, Ethan Van Skyver's Cyber Frog, Wreck Planet. That's his number two issue, his second crowdfunded project. Uh, and it's done over a million dollars. I mean, to not mention that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, my project, uh, College of the Dead Graduation Day, it's still in demand, still available. Oh, so is Ethan's. Ethan's is also still available. Is already at 32420 The first time this project did... Um, what was it, $5,000 roughly when it first came out, um, and then another 5000 over time, and now this sequel has done, you know, already more than three times that. It's been hugely successful, and and it's it's one, you know, so Ethan's is number one. I'm number, right now, 24 on this list, and I'll give you a link to this list. It's fascinating if you haven't seen it. This list, projects that were launched 
in um, 2020. So it doesn't even include projects that were launched just prior to or significantly prior to. These are just Comicsgate related projects. My com my project is also a Comicsgate related project, but this is a list of um, the top how many? 80 of them. All right, the lowest one is six dollars. It's very low. Um, the highest one is um, Ethan's at a million fifty two thousand. Um, but there are you know two hundred and thirty eight thousand um, from Richard Myers. Uh, the Expendables go to hell. Uh, Blade Devil, 226000 Unforgettable Tales. These are just reprint comics. And he's already done $225,000 on this. Actually, this project just closed. Cash Grab by Cecil, 219000 Another one uh, from Richard Meyer, uh, Jawbreaker's Grand Bazaar. Frega Booms, uh, Dan Frega's uh, Black Flag uh, title. And now, um, recently, John Malin just launched Graveyard Shift, his third in this series. It's already at 131,000. This one's gonna easily end at over 300,000. So there's a tremendous amount of business being done on Indiegogo and being done through the cross promotion uh, platform on YouTube, the uh, the Comics Gate Network. It's, it's quite amazing. There's a series I've been doing of videos called Secrets of the Comics Gate Network. Uh, there's a playlist on my channel. You ought to check it out. You can find out uh, all about uh, crowdfunding and also specifically how Comics Gate works. So looking at Studio Foglio, um, this is a series called Girl Genius, all right? And let's find out a little bit of the history. Girl Genius is written and drawn by Phil and Kaja Foglio. It sets the standard for how a creator can build an audience through longevity, word of mouth, and consistency. They've been publishing this um, webcomic forever, um, since 2001. And uh, Phil Foglio uh, had a following in independent comics for this kind of style of, of work that he does nice nice work um since uh, you know the 19 uh, early 1990s and uh, they've been doing it for a heck of a long time so um they have a twitter account and this is one of the things that inspired me to first launch college of the dead and actually also the mermaids uh years ago as a web comic initially and as you can see they do like these um individual panels people have they have um 5,000 followers on uh, Twitter. They're just different things that people do from a marketing standpoint. You know, if you've got sequential art pages, you can show some panels this way, and it's kind of interesting. You know, it's a unique thing to see on uh, Twitter. Um, as I was saying, we did this with College of the Dead. We really didn't build a big audience successfully with College of the Dead or with the mermaids doing this, and that's why I ultimately decided to finish the books for um, sale through... Um, Indiegogo crowdfunding because, it, it, you know, this is fine for them. They started in 2001. Their first uh, campaign for Girl Genius wasn't until, let's take a look at this. What was it, 2012 or something like that they launched? It was something crazy like that. Not crazy, but it's a long time ago. So they spent like 12 years, you know, building up their audience. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to draw a comic and spend 12 years uh, on a web comic and then finally launch it. I mean, I believe they sold some directly through their website first, but this was a big success for them. So they did $389,000 with uh, 4,400 backers, which is a little bit less than, I mean, what is it, around $90 a backer, uh, which is pretty good. It was a collection of trade paperbacks of their series. Um, and they've been publishing uh, on and off. They've been doing additional collections and things like that. Though their current numbers are between 150 and like 180,000, uh, this this one was 155,000 with 2,793 backers. You know why did the numbers go down? Um, I can't tell you. I haven't really been watching them carefully, um, and even if I was, I might not be able to tell you. Uh, maybe they don't offer a, a lot more backlist, but it is interesting to look and see like how people are doing and what they're doing uh, and how their success runs. Um, but, you know, can you learn anything from this? Sure. You know, you can look at their website. You can uh, look at their listings, look at their number of backers. If you want to see how a campaign is doing, a good rough uh, thing to look at is to divide the number of backers um, or the total dollars by the number of backers. So if they've been doing like a good, healthy $100 per backer, which especially if they have a backlist is, is what their goal really ought to be is $100 per sale. They're not really running that. You know, they'd be at like a 280,000. They're, they're at almost half that. So they're they're really at closer to like 50, $55 per backer on average. Initially, they were at 90. You know, what the heck happened? 
that would take a deeper analysis um, and we're not gonna do a deep analysis. We're gonna keep going. Um, I did also wanna say, although, you know, when they're saying that indie creators are upending mainstream comics, these guys are not upending and, and making the ma major companies question themselves. Comic State actually is. You know, upending means this, to set or turn something on its end or upside down. You know, to cause people to kind of rethink about what it is that they're doing. And Studio Foglio, see? Upend. Studio Foglio is a successful small independent business. There's nothing wrong with that. It'd be great to aspire to do that. Uh, but that's not something that the major companies are thinking twice about. All right, here's another one of their success stories, and it's kind of interesting, Iron Circus Comics. Now, I had recognized Iron Circus Comics, um, and I was doing a little bit of um, homework on these guys. I had recognized them back in the day, and I was like, eh, that's a little odd, because this is what, I didn't see their first book, but I did see this uh, second project of theirs. This was back, back, back in the day when I was looking at first crowdfunding, um, but this was, um, when the heck was this? Like 2012 or 2011? It says uh, estimate delivery 2012. So generally these things are done a year out uh, on Kickstarter, uh, typically. So this was probably back in 2011. And um, it's odd because it's mature material. And I didn't even think Kickstarter allowed that. So what these guys do, uh, Smut Peddler, is the, how did they did something like 85,000 on that first one with uh, 2,291 backers. Very respectable uh, numbers. How did they do that? How did they just come out with it? Was the idea that good? Look, this is Smut Peddler 2014. How did they have this level of success? So what is this? 5,709 backers with $185,000. Now, the, that is substantial. It's not even $60 per backer. So, you know, if it was $60 per backer, how much would it be? Almost, um, you know, $330,000 or something like that. So it's not, but that's, a, you know, it adds up $185,000. It's, it's good numbers. But uh, how did they get those numbers that high? Well, it's uh, an anthology. You know, it's a, it started, I believe, as a webcomic. It's an anthology. She's also published some other people with web comics um, that some of it's mature material, some of it's not like, this is an erotic uh, graphic novel. Um, let's take a look at this erotic graphic novel. So 1,215 backers, um, 32,000. Now 32,000 is a very respectable number. I'm happy to be at 32,000 for College of the Dead. Um, she did it with 1,200 backers though, and I did it with half the number of backers. So you always want to look at that when you're kind of assessing like, well, how well did it do? Because a lot of times these aren't just digital rewards. You actually have to fulfill them. This is an interesting project that she did. This was for um, cat mini comics uh, and trying to fund an animated short. This is 5,957 backers uh, raising $330,000. So that's $330,000. That is pretty substantial. So... But can they deliver that profitably? You know what? I haven't analyzed all this. I mean, over here, it's they're they're um, delivering a hardcover, the Lack of Daisy Essentials in hardcover plus the same title as a PDF. That's one thousand seven hundred and eighty-eight backers at a fifteen-dollar retail. I mean, that that's expensive. Now, a lot of this stuff is printed overseas, and that can make it more affordable. Uh, but still, that's a lot of handling. So I hopefully this is profitable for them. You know, we, we always wish the best for everybody, right? We're very positive and optimistic people like that. But that said, you know, there's what is are there things to learn from all this? Sure. There's always things to learn from analyzing these things. And we'll look at Lady Death also. All right, so that's Iron Circus. Um, hopefully they're, they're having success. Um, this guy, uh, Charlie Stickney, I don't know much about him. Let's see what it says here. Um, all right, a question that well-meaning interviewers often ask indie creators who fund their work through Kickstarter or other crowdfunding platforms is, so are you going to take it to a publisher now? People are curious about that. This question, which assumes the creator producing, printing, and selling the work, and also delivering it, uh, to customers isn't the definition of publishing. It's a symptom of misunderstanding. All right, so this isn't a very well-written article, written article, sorry. Um, so what they mean to say is, uh, no, not every everybody who does self-publishing is going to take their project and then sell to another publisher. Uh, apparently, uh, Iron Circus does sell their books to um, 
diamond uh, distributors. I'm, I'm assuming in incredibly low numbers, but there's nothing wrong with that. If that's what they want to do, good for them. Um, and lastly is Brian Polito here. Uh, Brian Polito, let's see what they have to say. Now, this person, I, <laughs> when they wrote, finally the unspoken king of indie comics. Now, I think they meant to say the unquestionable king of indie comics. He is not, or, or undisputed, he's, he's not the king of indie comics. Brian Polito is fantastic uh, and a great guy. Uh, and he's built a very successful franchise with his publishing for Lady Death. But he ain't, he ain't, he ain't the king. Uh, a pro, okay, so um, the bad girl approach may be written off by some as out of vogue, but the numbers don't lie. Polito success should put him in the same conversation as the highest paid, most read comics writers at the big two but the mainstream comics community just hasn't caught on. Well, mainstream comics community, here the thing with Brian Polito's listings are this. Brian does deliver what he promises. Look at his backers. He's got 2,668 backers uh, for $347,000. So this is, that's almost 100, and, it's like $140 approximately per backer on average. That's very good. You know, my campaign runs around $60 per backer. Uh, Ethan Van Skyver's incredibly successful campaign is a little bit more than 100 per backer. But Brian, he does take the cake with uh, an average of per backer that I've seen so far. I mean, and consistently good numbers per backer, very high numbers. That really gives money, gives Brian money to um, fool around with, you know, in terms of uh, making sure that his stuff is profitable when he's delivering it. So this is something to be really conscious of if you're interested in crowdfunding is when you're, first of all, look to duplicate success when you're going into crowdfunding. Look at what's worked for someone else who's obviously uh, achieved success that you want to achieve. So if you want to do a bad girl, 48 page full color book, look a lot at what Brian Polito does and don't try to reinvent the wheel. Use Brian's wheel to the extent you can. So, um, if you notice, Brian does do a digital, and but a lot of his money is not digital. He's got 121 digital copies. So how how is it that he's got 121 digital copies at six dollars? Doesn't that screw up his app his per backer average? It it yeah, it makes his per backer average uh, lower. Um, Brian does um, a twenty six dollar forty eight page graphic novel for twenty six dollars with free shipping uh, domestic in the US. So he's not charging a shipping fee. Um, he's got that kind of built into his system. Now, he's now sold, you know, if you're counting with me, 399 backers, 121 uh, digital between these two. And he still is um, not charging a lot of money for his books. So how, and he's also with this um, print, he's giving a free digital version. So does this work for, this works for Brian. The way I think this works the best for Brian is people look at it and they figure, well, I'm spending $26, you know, maybe, all right, I do I want to get, now he does multiple variants. That's a key part of Brian's strategy, right? So he has $26 for this Malevolent Decimation Premier Edition, whatever. So one version for a variant. He's got another variant that's another that's also $26. He's got another one that's another $26. He's got another one that's um, $30 for a t-shirt. Let's put that aside. So Brian will make you choose for free shipping between these three variants. You pick which one you want. Or, or and now here comes a t-shirt, um, do you want a print and um, the premiere edition? Or do you want a different print and one, and one of the variants? Or another print and one of the variants? And then what starts to happen is he collects these sets. Now he's got a hardcover version, right? Here's another, here's a hardcover edition that's um, $46, right? $46 and 97 backers have picked him up on that. So what he's starting to, what he starts to do is he has you look at different versions of things that you'd want. And then he comes back and offers you um, collections. Do you want to buy this one? 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 You can't decide. But 
later on, as it goes down the line, you wind up spending, you know, $320 on the Coffin Premier Edition Library. You know, he only sold eight of those, okay? But he sold 68 of this, that's $499. 68 at $500 each. That's like $34,000 in revenue from this one tier. And what it is, is the Decimation Mega Baller set. I mean, whatever that means, right? Um, but good for Brian. You know, he's figured out uh, a model that works for him where he gives people a lot of different options, multiple variants. He also offers backlist. He offers um, always something new. And he's got these expensive packages. Look at this, $899 for the Ultimate MD Legend set. I. I mean, it's a ton of stuff in a giant box, and he sold 74 of them. So this isn't for everybody. Brian has meticulously been figuring out his strategy and what he's doing over time, but some version of this you can obviously learn something from. Now, that's not upending how uh, major publishers are necessarily publishing. It's not causing them to say, we don't know how we want to do our business model anymore. It's completely upside down. They're really not changing much of what they're doing. The only thing that major companies have been doing over the last, whatever it's been, 15 or 20 years or so, has gotten more and more crazy with their multiple variant covers. But that's not because of um, uh, crowdfunding at all. Not, not whatsoever. Um, I, I did recently do a video about Marvel doing a... Um, box set to try to mimic Ethan Van Skyver's very successful sold out um, honeycomb box set, which he created this. This is a special edition, which is no longer available. It's sold out of Cyber Frog Wreck Planet number two, which was a, I loved the idea at a $200 retail price point, highly limited. It even got to the point where uh, multiple uh, store owners were buying them at full retail price because they know once this thing comes out, it's going to have a highly collectible value. So again, this is like um, this is for people that really want to consistently up their game in crowdfunding. They do like collectible box sets and things like that, um, and really deliver for the customer. Ethan's even doing toys now. So can you you know can you just get into this from nowhere and start doing things like this? No, but um, like I'm doing and other uh, crowdfunding publishers are doing, we learn from guys like Ethan that kind of blaze the trail a little bit and show us how to do certain things and plenty to learn from Brian. Probably a good amount of learn to learn from um, Iron Spike. Uh, you know, Iron Spike, it's taken eight years, but she's raised a million dollars through crowdfunding or a little bit more than that, you know, with this single project doing $330,000, this cat project. Um, you know, that's impressive. So there's something to learn from success. It's something you want to go and uh, study. And that's really why I wanted to do this video, guys, to go over and just kind of show you uh, a couple different formats of some different things that people are doing. Um, and uh, you can always find me on Twitter. Hit me up. Take a look at the Secrets of the Comics Gate Network uh, playlist series. It's pretty uh, interesting. I've done over 40 videos talking about these sorts of subjects. Uh, and again, if you want to support my work, collegeofthedead.com. Pick up a copy of College of the Dead Graduation Day where college costs you an arm and a leg. 48 pages, full color, shipping now. Appreciate your support. And sign up for uh, The Mermaids at epicmermaids.com. Um, that will be launching soon. It's like Game of Thrones with mermaids. You'll love it. I guarantee it. I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.